Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, товарищи. Today we'll talk about getting haircut and about the barber shops in the Soviet Union. And for those who don't know me, my name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. So, now we need to learn another Russian word. Парикмахерская. Actually, it probably came from maybe German language. Парикмахер. I would assume, but that's the word we use to call our barber shops, парикмахерская. And of course, we had no private barber shops. Everything was still government owned. The price to get a haircut for a guy was 55 kopecks. And before you started typing away questions, is it expensive or is it cheap? I would suggest to check my old videos, number 18, number 19, number 20 and number 22. Those were dedicated to the buying power of one kopeck, two kopecks, three kopecks and five kopecks. So I covered quite a bit what items could you purchase for little change. Like we had quite a few items you can buy for just one Soviet cent, one kopeck. So check those videos out before you ask the question like how expensive it was. But we'll talk about it here too. So 55 kopecks you could ride subway or bus for 11 trips because the cost of one trip on the subway was five kopecks. So if you look at the current prices of New York City subway, which is $2.75 per trip times 11, it's about $30. So if you look at that type of comparison, subway rides for haircut, it compares to $30 per haircut. Now, if you look at the prices for bread, 55 kopecks will let you buy about three loaves of bread. So if you look at the American prices, I would say $3 per loaf, you're looking at the $9 haircut. So you see, if you compare different items, you get to the different price. So subway price would be $30 in modern United States money. For bread, it will be about $9 for haircut. But if you look, from the modern price for the haircut here in America, so I would say about $15 in Michigan, where I live, you can buy a bottle of decent vodka for $15. Now, for 55 kopecks, it's not even close. It's about six haircuts to get one bottle of vodka. So, you see, it depending on which items you're throwing into comparison, it makes it uh, very confusing to figure out is it expensive or is it cheap. Generally, I look that the Soviet people, a family of two workers, were making around 250 rubles per month. So you'd say if the family here in America makes 2,500 per month after taxes, and it could be more, it could be less. So one ruble was equal about $10. Uh, so you say maybe then a haircut was about $5.50. I'm just trying to get some comparison. So I want to tell you right away, I really prefer to get haircuts back in the Soviet Union because now I can compare, you know, I'm having haircuts here in Michigan and America and I remember haircuts back in the USSR and I'm getting haircuts once in a while in Ukraine when I come to visit my parents. So there are two things that I hate about getting haircuts in America. Number one, they always trying to strike conversation with you and it annoys the hell out of me. For me, getting a haircut, it's like my zen zone. I just like to close my eyes and just get the haircut, pay the money and get out. And in America, just it's some kind of like a tradition. They trying to have a conversation with you, asking you questions. You know, when they hear my accent right away, there's a question, where you're from originally, blah, blah, blah. I don't like talking to strangers who give me a haircut. Reason number two. Most barbers in America, at least in my area, are male. They're men giving haircuts to the men and, I mean, it's okay, but I grew up getting, getting haircuts from ladies and I prefer that way very much. So that's the second thing I don't like is just there's mostly guys working the male barber shops and then ladies doing ladies here so i preferred soviet way when the girls giving you a haircut but 
To be fair, Soviet barbershops weren't ideal either. The thing I really hated about Soviet barbershops is a long wait in line. I don't recall ever spending less than an hour, usually two, maybe up to three hours waiting in line to get a haircut. It was just, I'm not sure how the Soviet architects or whoever was calculating how many barber shops per thousand of population to place, but we definitely had a shortage of barber shops because this is what you're going to waste your time on just waiting for the haircut. When I was in school, I didn't go to barber shops often, maybe once every three months. So when a teacher tells you, hey, your hair is too long, it doesn't look well kept, you need to get a haircut. That's when I go to my parents like, hey, teacher said I need a haircut. Give me 55 copecks and I'll go sit in the line and get a haircut. So then after school, I would walk to the closest barber shop and you know, you open the door to the waiting room, so the barber shops always had a separate waiting room, and then the main barber shop. So you see how many people, maybe four, five, six, maybe ten, and the first question you always ask, сколько мастеров работает? How many barbers are working right now? Because if you see five people and two guys or two ladies are cutting hair, you can get pretty quick. If there's a five people waiting and only one person cut in here, it's twice longer. So usually the barber shop will have three chairs and there'll be maybe one or two or three, we call them master. So like master cutter. So of course that's a question. You see how many people and you ask how many people are working cut in here and then you decide, okay, am I ready to waste hour or two? Well, it looks like it will be too long of the wait and then you just go for next day, maybe try maybe to be a shorter line. And now I would like to share with you uh, several stories of my haircuts. Of course, I don't remember every single haircut I got in 20 years I lived in the Soviet Union, but several were quite special, so I still remember them. One time when I was maybe eight or nine, my dad took me to get a haircut and he just kind of like dropped me off. So I was sat in line and I, got a haircut from a guy that's the only time i remember getting a haircut from a guy and he did such a horrible job that after i came home my dad was so mad and he sent me back to fix it and when i got back to the barber shop i was stepped in and i saw there was a huge line a lot of kids waiting i think it was right before beginning of the school so everyone was getting a haircut and I wasn't brave enough to ask them, like, hey, can you let me go ahead of all of you? Because I just got birched, but this master, he's supposed to fix it. So I just stood there for a minute, then I turned around and I went back and I said, it's okay, I can uh, be with this bad haircut. I don't want to wait for another two hours in line uh, asking the guy to fix his bad job. You may notice on some pictures of mine that I post, in the videos or on Instagram. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram on Ushanka underscore show. My hair looks extremely blonde and that was naturally bleached by sun. So every time I spend the summer in the village with my grandparents, I will be outdoors so much that my hair turns like bright, bright white. So one time, I guess I was also around that early seven or eight or nine years old because we still lived in an old apartment that one room apartment on Chokolovka region in Kiev. My mother was yelled by the barbershop lady because when she brought me to get a haircut before school right after I came back from the village, a lady yelled at my mother for bleaching my hair because she said, you can't do that to kids that young. You cannot bleach their hair because their hair will go bad. So my mother had to explain that's my natural color that happens every summer. So I thought it was pretty funny. I had one very awkward haircut. And once again, it's a old one-room apartment. So I was still under 10 years old. And I think at that time, my school... And I need to tell that story too. My goodness, there's so many stories to share still. 
So I was going to school in the afternoon because we had too many kids in the area. So school had two like morning classes and then afternoon classes. So I was a part of the afternoon school and I went in the morning to get a haircut and lady refused to give me a haircut because she discovered lice in my hair. I believe someone in school had lice and I got it. So I had to wait all the way for evening to tell my mom that I couldn't get a haircut because I had lice. So my mother had to purchase a so special soap that was DDT. They used to sell soap like that. And that's what was used to kill lice. And then she washed my hair really good with DDT soap. And next day I went back and uh, a couple of days later, I don't remember, and I managed to get a haircut. But I think it was a quite embarrassing kind of moment, especially for my parents to discover that a kid has lice. So, but that was, as I said, it was early 80s. One time when I was in my late teens, I think maybe like 19 or maybe even almost 20, uh, right before going to the village for the summer, I decided to get shaved bald. I don't know why. I didn't tell my parents. I just went to the barber shop and I sat in a chair and the young lady, she's like, so what, you know, she, they used ask you what you want, right? What kind of haircut you want? And I was like, I want bold. So she was really surprised, but then she just started, and I think she was having a good time. So she kind of shaved a half of my hair and the look at the mirror. And then she kind of, she, she was goofing around, but I, I got a one bold haircut. As I said, my mother was really upset about it. And then when the neighbors saw me in our building, they all thought that maybe I got drafted to the army service because I was that age. So yeah, my mom was really upset that I got that haircut that destroyed my hair. And I think I look kind of silly. And I have also some sweet memories about getting haircut in the Soviet Union. So I was in my probably, I don't know, 16, 17 year old. And looking at my pictures from those years from school, I was like, man, I should get a haircut more often because I don't look good on many pictures because my hair is just way too long. But the nice part was when I was getting a haircut, those girls at the barber shop they're really young and very pretty. So that was a lot of fun to get a haircut from them. You know, they touch your face with their soft hands. You smell their perfume. They're right close to you. And as I said, they don't talk to you. They like completely ignore you. And one time, that was my most fantastic haircut. These two young ladies were chatting about last evening. So them went with their boyfriends uh, to see Soviet comedian. It was one guy who was very popular. His name was Hazanov. So they went to the show. So now they're talking about it completely ignoring uh, two of us. So it was me and another guy getting a haircut. So they talk, they giggle. And one lady, I remember she, one lady was still like saying, hey, I was laughing so hard and for so long that today my stomach hurts, like my abs muscle hurt. And they share those jokes that they remember from yesterday and they giggle. And then just by accident, this lady kind of bumps into me with her firm boob. And of course, I'm like in this teenager heaven. I smell her perfume. I feel her firm body, her soft hands. So that was 55 copecks well spent. I probably would spend a dollar or ruble. But in Soviet barbershops, most people didn't tip. I never tipped in my life, never thought about it. I just give them 55 copecks. Thank you very much. And I leave. But that day, probably, if I had extra money, I would definitely would tip that girl. That was fantastic haircut. Of course, now situation changed quite drastically in Kiev and in Ukraine generally. There's a tons of private barber shops, and now you have a market forces. So if you have a, a lot of business, you add uh, people, you add more barber shops. So now it's pretty nice. You just walk in and hardly any lines. Uh, prices, it's interesting. When I started getting haircut in Ukraine, after Ukraine, you know, became independent and private enterprise opened up, prices were ridiculously low. Like here was about $11, $12 in America. I was getting haircut for 80 cents to a dollar, you know, if you convert the currency in the local Ukrainian grivna. So I was coming every year or every two years. And every time, you know, I was like, why would I get haircut here in America for 
thirteen dollars if I can go to visit my parents and the same time I can get a haircut for a buck. But then I come back two years later to Kiev and price already three dollars, then five dollars. And before the crisis of 2009, 2010, prices actually went up. There was same cost to get a haircut in Michigan or in Kiev, which I thought was quite ridiculous. But then when Grivna collapsed uh, from, it was like eight Grivnas for one dollar. And then it was a collapse and it became like 30 Grivnas per one dollar. Prices didn't change that much. So the haircut become, became again quite affordable. So now you can get a haircut around six, seven dollars. So that's pretty reasonable. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this story. And if you guys have some good stories of your own about the getting haircuts somewhere in the interesting, unusual places, uh, please share under this video. I'll be curious to uh, listen to your story. And now we're gonna say goodbye. До свидания, and we'll talk to you soon. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.